Check out footcointraders.com for all of your ultimate team coins and be sure to use the code CHEZ at checkout to get yourself an extra discount. Hey guys, how's it going? Chez back again with another episode of the AC Milan career mode. It's episode number 5 now, we're out of the transfer window, so it's time to jump up to 3 games per episode. So we will be having some longer videos from here on out, which I know will please a, a certain amount of you, because you guys do like, or do prefer the videos that are, you know, 8, 9, 10 minutes plus, as opposed to the ones that are around about the 6-7 minute mark for uh, those transfer window games, but it's nice to fit everything into the transfer window. It's nice to be able to, to go through it slowly so that I can get as much feedback from you guys as possible. And that's exactly what we did in uh, in the opening transfer window of this series. But this team, the AC Milan side that we have right now, it's not the strongest. And uh, the game appreciates the fact that it's not the strongest. It isn't asking for too much out of us in this first season. And we can't expect too much out of it in this first season. Because, uh, you know, we're, we're still an improving, a growing side that really needs to recapture the essence of what AC Milan really is all about but we're coming up against Napoli in the opening game of this one and you presume that Napoli are going to be one of the teams that we're looking at fighting for one of those top four Champions League spots because you would expect Juventus to win the league and you've got teams such as ourselves Napoli, Inter, Roma perhaps maybe Lazio if they can strengthen a little bit or if they have strengthened a little bit looking at those sort of teams to uh, to be the big ones in the Italian league to kind of put pressure on us to maintain a decent level of performance to ensure that we can qualify for next season's Champions League of course we are in the Champions League already this season and uh, we did have the first game of that uh, of that European campaign in yesterday's episode so if you did miss it feel free to go back check the channel page for it there will be a link in the bottom left hand side of your screen to that video if uh, if you did miss it but we're uh, it was really really slow first half to be completely honest Napoli were defending very very well indeed and I was struggling to break them down El Shirawi was just really really tired constantly he's got high high work rates and he was never really in the sort of position that I would want him to be higher up the pitch which was starting to become a bit of an issue but uh, wasn't that much of a problem early on in this game and as you can see into the second half Mario Balotelli draws a great save out of Pepe Reina there, tipping it wide up that uh, far top corner. And we're going to have another chance as the uh, the corner comes in. Zapata goes up, and the referee is going to point to the spot here. And I wasn't too sure what for, but you'll be able to see from the replay that uh, their defender, I think it's Zuniga, goes up with his hand there, just clips it with his fingertips. It is handball. Mario Balotelli is going to step up. Doesn't really miss penalties, but he does so here in this one. And to be fair, that's actually quite realistic because Mario scored something like 30 out of 30 penalties in his career. And the first one he missed was against Napoli, against Pepe Reina. So, in all fairness, that is the most realistic moment of any career mode we've ever done on this channel. Mario Balotelli missing a penalty against Pepe Reina. But they were going to snatch the victory late on. A shot that comes back off the post deflects back to uh, to Lorenzo Insigne. And unfortunately, we take our first defeat from this Serie A season. We won the opening game against uh, Cagliari beat Olympiacos in yesterday's Champions League game and we've lost our first game of the season against Napoli it's a side that you would expect uh, you know, us to, to have problems against as a growing side like we've said and they are one of the better sides in the league so we're hoping to bounce back with three points away at Bologna as you can see we've only played two games compared to everyone else who's played at least three or four so we sit 16th in the table at the minute but that doesn't really uh, you know, tell the whole story and we really need to catch up before we get a realistic look at how the table is going to lie heading into the opening stages of this season and De Chilio was just kind of trying to grind his way through the the defence there and again Bologna were defending so so well I found this to be not necessarily a problem in Serie A it's just the way that Serie A is teams defend so so well so solidly so resolutely but Lulic just powers his way through absolutely everyone there gets a little bit of luck with the deflection off the defender but still really really determined run from him there to give us an early 1-0 lead in the 27th minute and that's his debut goal for the club as well it's nice to see him get off the mark quite early on in the season and hopefully he can continue that now and hopefully, you know, put together some sort of uh, decent run of form, whether it be goals or assists, because as a wide midfielder, you'd like both from him, to be completely honest. Balotelli is our main goal scorer, or is hopefully going to be our main goal scorer in this uh, in this series. And he did come close there to uh, to getting us a 2 lead. He's going to come close again. Shot deflected, and Lulic again with the acrobatic effort, well blocked, well saved, and unfortunately, De Chilio really should have done better with that follow-up effort, heading wide into the side netting when he had the open goal to aim at. Really disappointed there, but I bought Robinho one, and he wins the flick on there. 
Dropping it to Balotelli, really beautiful whipped effort and unfortunately the goalkeeper goes up to make a spectacular save. And the Bologna were going to have a chance to sneak something at the end here. Kone with a free kick, unfortunately for them, it's straight down Guita's throat and that was how the game was going to end. They really didn't offer much offensively at all, Bologna, to be completely honest. And it was only that single goal from Lulic that was the difference between us after 90 minutes. So, we're heading into the third game of the episode, which is against Sampdoria. Now, I'm, I changed things up a little bit, starting 11-wise. As you can see, Abate, Victor Ruiz, and, uh, and Kaka are starting in this one. We moved Honda out from Cam to uh, a wide role and dropped El Shirawi onto the bench because he was really, really tired after those two games. So, uh, I'm, it's the situation I'm going to have to monitor with his, uh, with his stamina, etc. But we come up against Sampdoria, a side that had actually lost their opening three games of the season, according to the commentary. So, I was hoping to confound their misery in this one. And we got off to a decent start trying to play the ball about a little bit and uh, Montalivo had the effort but unfortunately got underneath it just a little bit too much and it flew over the top of the bar but we were creating chances in this one more so than we had done in the previous couple of games but Sampdoria were also creating stuff themselves Manolo Gabbiadini striking the outside of the post in the 27th minute. They were really coming close to threatening us and uh, getting themselves in front. But Polly playing against his former side, who uh, he used to play against, of course, he signed to AC Milan in, uh, in the summer transfer window prior to uh, the start of the career mode on the uh, download latest updates, etc. So uh, he was already at the team when we started, but he did, in fact, come in that window from Sampdoria. So uh, I was hoping he could put a good impression in against his former employers, really show that he deserved the move to a side such as AC Milan from uh, a lesser Serie A side as Sampdoria, so to speak. But uh, we're pushing down the right-hand side with Lulic again. Him and Kaká were linking up really, really nicely, although kind of inadvertently because of tackles from defenders. But Kaká's going to cut inside, playing Lulic again. Kind of delays with his first touch, but that turn was superb and he set up the chance absolutely beautifully to cut inside rifle it across the goalkeeper and Lulic picks up another goal for us in his debut season so we go in at half time 1-0 up I wasn't quite happy with how things were going so I changed the formation at half time changed to a 4-3-1-2 took off Honda and brought on Alexander Lacazette up top because Lulic can do the job at centre mid he's got the uh, the all round stats to be able to cope in that sort of role and I wanted to try out Balotelli with a partner yet again to see how we got on and they actually linked up pretty well indeed. Lacazette playing the 1-2 with Balotelli. Great first touch to bring it down into his stride. Breaks into the box and unfortunately now it's our turn to hit the woodwork and it bounces away and Sampdoria clear it. So we come close to a second there but not quite close enough. But Polly's involved yet again. Breaks the Lacazette. Nice turn. Going to find Abati on the overlap. Decent shot from the right back but it's another good save from Da Costa, the, uh, the goalkeeper and we're only going to have to settle for a corner. Uh, Lacazette is on the corner but I'm going to switch to Kaka who's got a better delivery. Whips and he's going to find some Pat a great header off the bar and Sampdoria attempt to clear but it's only as far as De Jong who's come on for uh, for Montalivo into Poli turns the defender well and how is that for a goal on your weak foot against your former club at the first time of meeting them at home at the San Siro absolutely superb Andrea Poli welcome to AC Milan that is an absolutely fantastic goal and a great way to put us 2-0 up and again Lacazette and Balotelli are going to link up here this time it's the other way around it's Balotelli finding Lacazette on the run with a lob through ball great first touch great pace to get away and a tidy finish but unfortunately it's just not quite accurate enough to find that bottom corner but it wasn't to matter we are going to take all three points from this one a convincing 2-0 win against Sampdoria and I was really really pleased that we were able to, uh, to score more than one in a game for the first time since that opening game against Cagliari so uh, hopefully we can push on and put together a nice run of form as you can see we're up to ninth although the table is a little bit out of sorts because we've played four everyone else has played at least five or six but if we win both of our games in hand we can move up to second if uh, of course the other teams that have played five like Napoli and Inter don't win their games but we still got the chance to go up into those European spots you can see top three for Champions League which is what the board want from us in 4th and 5th for Europa League. But that's going to bring this particular episode to a close, guys. Thank you very much for watching. If you missed the previous episode yesterday, there's an annotation on the screen on the right-hand side to it, to it to take you there if you missed it. Then on the left-hand side, if you want to subscribe to the channel and you would like to do so for more of this series and the My Player series, which, incidentally, there was an episode of which went up last night. So feel free to check the channel page for that if you missed it. But there's links in the description and an annotation on the screen there to subscribe if you haven't already. And feel free to follow me on Twitter as well, at Chesnoy Gaming, to stay up to date with everything that happens with me me and this channel but that's all for today guys so thank you very much for watching and i'll see you tomorrow with some more my player